Hey guys, hope you're having a nice day, and let's go ahead and play Kaltus Art at the Battlefield of Eternity. Okay, so... Uh, I feel like our team is slightly, slightly worse than theirs. Uh, we do have Tyranny though, so that might be kind of like what what helps us win this, cause um, uh, we can race with her a lot better. Uh, and she's like a second support for us, and the enemies only have Oriel to support them. The problem is that we have Zul'jin uh, for the immortal races, and in order for Zul'jin to match Vala in terms of damage output, he needs to be at very very low health, which would make him a perfect target for Kerrigan, for anybody on their team, like anybody could just one-shot him at that point. So we need to be careful about that, but we have more Furion, that means we have we will, we will have a lot of mana as call to that, and um, lots of cooldown reduction, and that obviously helps yeah, because our cooldowns are already super super fast. Uh, Miles Sail should always solo, so <laughs> that's fine by me. And we're gonna be doing a, a, an extra like proper build today, uh, we're gonna go for the chain build. And we're gonna start off by missing our chains, seems, seems good. Let's not let's not die. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh my gosh, why why does they dodge it like that? I don't want to die. No. Okay. Damn, I haven't landed a single chain this game. But I, I think I'm doing it kind of wrong. I, I'm um, trying to chase people with my chains and uh, it's actually Oh, Kerrigan, why didn't you step forward a bit? That would have been so good. Why did... okay. Well done, my son. Oh, that could have gone better. Yeah, people just keep getting caught in those... Uh, in those runes... Uh, roots by Kel to that. That could have been fun. Okay. Okay, so the key... It's always to, like, uh, you chain somebody once, right? Uh, you initiate the chain sequence, I guess. And then you just throw down Frost Nova, like in the middle of the target you have already chained. And the target you want to, uh, to chain towards to. And obviously, first of all, you need to hit it. And it can be difficult at times, but... That's... Oh, yeah, I'm dead now. Oh, am I? Yeah, I am dead. Uh, what are you doing, Zojin? Kill Kerrigan. There you go. Well, at least <laughs> at least one person died. Uh, yeah, this is not good whatsoever. What? Okay, Malsail, what are you doing? Yeah, it seems like people are just kind of casually walking into death. Uh, myself included, so that's fine. Uh, we can't really defend the immortal uh, too much, so to say. Wow, I... how did I... how do I keep missing my combos? It seems so... so lame. Uh, but Kerrigan is also kind of like a good target for me to combo and whatnot. Uh, since uh, she will be static while performing her combo, uh, so I can kind of like easily... I chain it together and whatnot. Oh well, that was fun. Um, do they have shields? Not really, so I will go for Phylactery. That seems like a good plan. I can easily defend this. Okay, so she's chained. I don't know who else is there. Okay, there was a Lunara, but I didn't see her sadly. Okay, we need to be kind of spread out, otherwise, what's his face? Otherwise, everyone will just kill us. Okay. Well, Zul'jin won us a immortal, at least. So that's good. Okay, we definitely need to start stacking up our trade. We haven't been able to land anything this game. Like, all of them are really, really small. So it's kind of hard to land skill shots. But at the same time, like, their movement patterns are actually really, really good. 
I like say kind of always try to dodge my combos and obviously I am not able to hit them because of that. So now I will have my spike which means I would it will be much easier for me to uh, do proper things here. Except I again I'm that could have been uh, that should have been a very easy uh, stun onto wow onto what's her face onto Kerrigan. But again, I keep missing my chains. I don't know. It's like I, must rest, heroes, but I, I actually don't know why that's happening. I'm I'm a bit confused. Uh, but we have at least like 19 stacks of our blight, which is not too bad. Could be better though, of course. Uh, but we got our first cooldown reduction, so that's nice. All of our basic abilities are now two seconds, two seconds faster to cooldown, and at level, not at level, but when we have 30 blight, it's gonna be even better and 75% spell armor, which would be spell, spell armor, uh, not spell armor, but. Uh, Oh, please don't kill me. Do we have a healer? No. A fitting tribute to your master. She did. Oh well. Um we had three P I I guess the mercenary camp was more important than <laughs> killing two of them. And they could have died. I mean I was I actually landed my combos for combo for once. And I guess Zulgin just wants to do mercenaries all day. Sure. He could solo it if he disables his um, trait so that he doesn't kill himself. Like at that threshold, he just disables his trait and attacks it and he, he's gonna solo the camp. But it's okay. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of Frostblast. Uh, first of all, it doesn't really do too much damage to the main target. Most of the damage comes in the AoE impact and it's very very slow moving so it's very 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 easy to And there we go the perfect chain uh, I guess the silence was kind of wasted except it wasn't really because Oriel actually no they weren't level 10 I was going to say that Oriel could have used her um, crystal thing uh, crystal ages and just completely avoid my combo but she they aren't even level 10 which is kind of ridiculous I feel like we I don't know I mean we are hard winning this game right and it doesn't feel that way for some reason it feels like we are slightly behind I can't really explain why probably because I was so bad at my combos Like right there, I should have used my ultimate before I used my um, I combo. Not not correct. Now that was a correct combo. Good job, Zoljin. Though, I mean, you know what? I was complaining about the Zoljin doing mercenary ca camps and whatnot, but he is doing damage. He is doing immortals. He is doing everything right. Okay, there are structures, uh, so we can just chain to a structure and then to a hero. And that will be just as fun. Oh, I didn't. Damn, I didn't use my what's her face. Uh, my W. I was a bit too far. But that was fun. I killed somebody. I guess. I mean, we could have been more aggressive as a team, but oh well. Like everyone was here for some reason when we. He had an immortal tanking the tower shots and whatnot, and we could have just snowballed them. Like they were, all of them were kind of overextended, but because I was the only one uh, kind of pressuring enemies, uh, I was the one overextended for my team. Uh, but I have my fell fissure, so that's fun. We're gonna go for chains of ice now. That's an awesome ability. Oh, you know what? I should have waited for the Crystal Ages. Like, you can actually time it perfectly, because, like, the moment Crystal Ages kind of hits, uh, it's... you just wait half a second, and then you use your Shadow Fissure, and the person who was in the Crystal Ages is now dead. So that's fun. Also, we can kind of spam our Shadow Fissures, so let's just use them randomly. 
I mean, they don't really cost too much mana, and the cooldown is only 15 seconds. I know, I really like, I really prefer Shadow Fissure over the Frost Blast. It's just the damage is just so insane. Like, it's two precision strikes. Uh, after you get your 30 blights, it does the damage of two precision strikes. Oh, it or does it. No. I think I might be wrong there. Like, that seems improbable. Maybe like one and a half. Yeah, something like that. that, that that's more likely. But that's crazy, right? And it's such a short cooldown. Just, I don't know. I probably should not be frontlining for my team. Actually, you know what? We don't have a tank, so... Yeah, I there isn't really anybody who can do this. But I can do this camp. I have my Phylactery stacked up, so I'm healing for the spell damage I do, 10%. It's not too much, but it helps, obviously. Oh well. Hoped I would combo that. Her. You can actually hide your glacial spike in like a bush, and then. Uh, oh yes, that was the best thing ever. Oh my gosh, that was so damn satisfying. <laughs> we killed three people with our combo. Hell yeah! Kill to that. What a what a cool hero. You can kind of pressure this. Uh, I will yeah, I will go help bottom. Helps Zuljin a bit. Uh, I think you can kind of solo it, but I can kind of range poke it with my death and decay, and that would be kind of enough. Can use it again. Yeah, they didn't even need to tank it, but that's fine. Uh, let's just kill the immortals. Uh, we should do the immortal, and then we should do the camp after. Uh, while the immortals are switching, that would be the proper play. Uh, auto attacking is kind of irrelevant uh, as Kel'Thuz. I mean, it helps, but it doesn't really do that much damage uh, until you get uh, the Hungering Cold at level 16, which I will probably get. Uh, because what it does is, after you root somebody with your Frost Nova, uh, they start taking like extra damage from your attacks, from all of your attacks. Uh, so obviously, that's nice. I just poke it from the long range. You don't really want to be like in the front line as Kel'Thuz that. Like you, you are a huge hero, but man, you are vulnerable. Well, that was good enough. I kind of I centered my Frost Nova onto the spike, and I should not have done that. That's kind of a waste of time. So is there a chain there? Please don't kill the wall. Oh well. Uh, I will have my chains in two seconds, so I can I can chain the keep. Then we're gonna see what happens after. Nothing. Nobody kind of overextended or anything. Bye bye, Vala. Oh, that was a perfect combo. Like I blew everything on that. My ultimate, I precast my ultimate and everything, and we got the Vala. So that was fun. Oh, I should have used my ult again. Well, that was a fast game. Oh, like the, when we killed three people, was that, oh, that was ah, this game was this game was kind of fun. I mean, it started a bit rough. Uh, with the whole missing of my skill shots and whatnot, but uh, later on it was, yeah, we kind of, yeah, that was that was good. I I enjoyed that game, but this is kind of like the standard build you would go for SKT, at least in my opinion. At level twenty, mm, I usually go for the cooldown reduction on Shadow Fissure that resets your cooldowns on your Shadow Fissure. Uh, when you hit it onto enemy heroes and that makes for some really like fun interactions like you can just sit at, at your core and keep spamming your ultimate doing insane damage as long as you hit it uh, so that's kind of fun but just like in general having just comboing I don't, like this build is kind of probably 
the best one I feel like you have chains of ice that slows people down after you chain them together which means you have um, a better time landing your uh, frost nova so they they get rooted then you follow up with your shadow fissure they get dead <laughs> and uh, that's kind of cool and obviously uh, just getting like extra damage from your for your chains is very helpful and reducing the armor of heroes like again it all goes into uh, just comboing people together right when you have all of your cooldowns up somebody will die if you combo them properly so this build just makes sense to me so this is kind of the one i'm just us using all the time this was a very very fast game by the way i think what i like the most about cal to z is how like explosive he is right like it's not just like slow poking people but like as cal to z you feel like you have a lot of control over your over the battlefield over the flow of the battle like you can you can disengage people you can engage kind of decently i mean you would root somebody for like two three seconds on your own uh but it, you are very vulnerable doing so because like you need to be in the front line your range the range of your abilities is pretty damn small uh and you always want to have your frost nova as a follow-up so very often so like most of the time you would be vulnerable to to Kerrigan, to ETC, to anybody who can just turn on you and stun, stun lock you for a couple of seconds for their team to kill you. So you need to be kind of very very careful. Uh, but th that's also where the um, Chains of Ice also kind of comes online I guess. Because like, when, you, when you have Chains of Ice uh, what you can do is you can kind of engage from distance just using your chains you don't even need to follow up with your uh with your frost nova because enemies will get pulled together stunned for half a second and then they're gonna be slowed for an extra 1.25 seconds which means your team has time to kind of catch up to them maybe you will let your frost uh, land your frost nova after like after the chain stun expires while chasing them uh maybe you have somebody on your team who would engage the enemies so like I think this talent level 13 chains of ice is probably the best one for Kel to that and it just seems I don't know it seems absolutely superior to any other talent that there is uh, at level 13 which is kind of weird because um all other talents are more or less like you know what I can see that being useful there I can see that being useful there but at like, level 13 Chains of Ice is the way to go. The other one is a cooldown reduction, I think, if you hit two heroes, but I don't. I feel like I have enough cooldowns. Like, I never feel like I need to reduce cooldowns on my chains. But maybe, like, uh, in a like in a longer team fight, maybe that's when you would want cooldown reductions, like when both teams have lots of uh, ways to heal themselves up. Uh, so getting those multiple stuns per team fight can be a lot more helpful. But when you can kill somebody within one combo, you don't ever need the cooldown reductions. And by the way, I don't remember if I mentioned it or not. Perfect combo. You know how like Jaina has a perfect combo. You open up with uh, Blizzard, then you Q E R. No, actually, you know what? Scratch that. Jaina's perfect combo is if you go for Ring of Frost. Uh, you open up with Blizzard, Ring of Frost, QE, and that's how you do like the most damage within a second as you can ever do as Jaina, right? So Kel'Thuzad's uh, kind of ver version of the perfect combo uh, would be landing your E. Okay, if you need it, you use your Crystal Spike, then you use your Frost Nova, you use your W, uh, then you immediately use your ultimate in the center of the Frost Nova, right uh, if you go for shadow fissure uh, you use the shadow fissure in the center of the frost nova and then you uh, use your chains use your e again ch to chain people into that spot of instant damage and like by the time they are pulled in the root hits your ultimate hits uh, they have 15 less ar less armor because you just pull them together uh, also they are slowed they will be taking extra damage every time they take damage, which means that they will take damage from your ultimate, probably from your auto attacks. It's it's amazing. Maybe I should have tried... Um, I never tried the spell power talent at level 16. I think that can be fun. Because like now that I think about it, uh, Hunger and Cold is only ever useful if... Um, 
if you are auto attacking because it would only trigger once. It would trigger once and then when you use your Qs. And that's probably it. Like if you... But hitting your Qs is kind of difficult. Like uh, all of your other abilities can kind of um, bypass minions and whatnot. Whereas your Q... If you are fighting in an enemy minion wave, your Q is completely useless. Uh, so hunger and cold can be really, really bad. But like it's reliant on you for on you to hit your Q, like your because it procs very, very often. Like I think it's two, maybe f I want to say it's two procs per second. Uh, so you would get extra one hundred twenty damage per second to enemies that you have rooted. Yeah, but without your Q, Hunger and Cold is kind of useless. So maybe I should go for Spell Power. Maybe I should try that. Because that would also amplify the damage of your ultimate and whatnot, right? Uh, since your ultimate would land after after the chains and after the root. So you already get at least two stacks of your Spell Power. Uh, so getting that extra damage on an ultimate that already does a ton of damage. Uh, that can be really beneficial. I don't know, I don't really see the usefulness of anything else at level 20 aside from the Might of the Scourge, sadly. I mean, Death Chill can be good, the upgrade for the other ultimate, but that means that you pick up the ultimate for its level 20 variant, and that's never really that great, but it can be really really fun. Because like, uh, what it does is, after you, after your ultimate lands, every time somebody dies under the effect of it, another ultimate kind of goes off, explosion goes off immediately. So it's like a pyro blast constantly exploding around people, and it's it can be really really fun. But aside from that, uh, it's kind of I don't know the, that ball of ice is kind of useless. Uh, it's probably it's probably really good as a pairing to other ultimates. Like if you if you have etc with the mosh pit, he lands the mosh pit, then you target uh, let's say a tank uh, with your frozen ball of death, it lands on a tank, everyone else gets rooted and dealt a ton of damage and then because of your death chill, because of your level 20 upgrade, the moment carries start dying, like uh, lower health heroes, uh, more explosions kind of go off in the mosh pit, so you end up like chain killing people, but why not go shadow fissure if you're gonna do that, plus you can use two shadow fissures per one mosh pit, maybe even three. Uh, because it's it's a guaranteed hit and it gets refreshed at level 20, so you just keep hitting it and I mean it will be even more damage probably. Uh, but yeah, Call of Zed is very very fun. And I think that's gonna be it, so if you enjoyed the video consider subscribing and as always guys thank you so much for watching and see you next time.